If you studied linear algebra, then you probably know about matrices, tables of numbers most of the time organized in rows and columns. One of the most fundamental matrix operations is matrix multiplication, the operation of multiplying two matrices. We may think that multiplying two matrices is done just by applying the operation on each pair of numbers, like it's the case with addition and subtraction. But no, multiplying two matrices is a bit harder. To multiply two matrices A and B, for each element of the row I column G, we do the sum of the first element of the row I of A times the first element of the column G of B, plus the second element of the row I of A times the second element of the column G of B, and so on. So Cig is the sum of Aik times Bkg, where k goes from 1 to n. For example, if we want to multiply these two matrices, C11 will be 3 times 4 plus 5 times 1 plus 1 times 2 plus 3 times 6, which is 37. C12 will be 3 times 1 plus 5 times 2 plus 1 times 4 plus 3 times 2, which is 23, and so on. We can easily translate this process into code. We want to multiply a matrix A of size n by m by a matrix B of size m by p. Both have m because the number of columns of the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. Now we create a matrix of n rows and p columns. It represents our product. Then for each cell i, g, and c, we want the sum of a, i, k times b, k, g. So for each k from 0 to m, we add a, i, k times b, k, g. After the loop, we return C, our product. This method is the brute force method. It has a theory of n cubed time complexity if n, m, and p are equal, which is the case for square matrices, because of the three four loops. But we have other algorithms for matrix multiplication, like the one we will see today, the Streisand's algorithm. Ok, let's multiply these 2 by 2 matrices. We have A, B, C, D in the first one and E, F, G, H in the second one. We get C11 equal to AE plus BG, C12 equal to AF plus BH, C21 equal to CE plus DG, and C22 equal to CF plus DH. What if I tell you that we can apply the same logic if A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H were matrices? Imagine that we want to multiply these two 8 by 8 matrices. We split them into four parts, A, B, C, D for the first one and E, F, G, H for the second one. And now we just calculate AE plus BG, AF plus BH, CE plus DG, CF plus DH, and we merge them into one matrix. It represents the product of A uppercase and B uppercase. But A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H are also matrices, so to calculate AE, for example, we also need to do a matrix multiplication. And guess what? We use the same process. We split A and E into four parts each, and we do the necessary calculations to get the product. And so on and so on. What we're doing here is a divide and conquer algorithm. To multiply two matrices of size n, we're splitting the problem into smaller subproblems. We're multiplying smaller matrices, matrices of size n by 2 in our case. And to multiply those matrices of size n by 2, we split them into matrices of size n by 4. And so on and so on until the size becomes small enough to just use the brute force method. In code, to split a square matrix into 4 parts, we get its size n, then we return 4 matrices, one where we take the first n by 2 rows and the first n by 2 columns, one where we take the first n by 2 rows and the last n by 2 columns, one where we take the last n by 2 rows and the first n by 2 columns, and one where we take the last n by 2 rows and the last n by 2 columns. And in the Strassen function, if the size is small enough, we can just use the brute force method. Else, we split the first matrix into 4 parts A, B, C, D, we split the second matrix into 4 parts E, F, G, H, then recursively, we calculate A, E, B, G, A, F, B, H, C, E, D, G, C, F, and D, H. After it, C11 is A, E plus B, G, C12 is A, F plus B, H, C21 is C, E plus D, G, and C22 is C, F plus D, H. Here we calculated the 4 parts of the product matrix, so we just join them into one matrix of size n and we return it. It represents the product of our two initial matrices. For the time complexity, we're calling the function 8 times with matrices of size n by 2. We have 8 times t of n by 2. And we also have stuff in theta of n squared, like splitting the matrices, calculating the parts of c, and combining them. 
we get t of n is equal to a times t of n by 2 plus t of n squared. And t of 0 is t of 1 because multiplying matrices of size 2 is done in constant time. By applying the master method, we get a equal to 8, b equal to 2, c equal to 2, and d equal to 0. Log b of a is log 2 of 8, which is equal to 3, which is greater than c, so t of n is in theta of n power log b of a, which is theta of n cubed. Our algorithm has a time complexity of theta of n cubed. But wait, the brute force solution also had the theta of n cubed time complexity. Why would we use the Strassens algorithm that can even be slower than brute force because of recursion and other stuff? Okay, let's go back to the algorithm. After splitting the matrices, we need to calculate AE plus BG, AF plus BH, CE plus DG, and CF plus DH. For that, we calculated the 8 products and calculated the sums. But in reality, we have a smart way of modifying these sums in order to reduce the required matrix multiplications. Let me show it to you. We can write AE plus BG as A plus D times E plus H, plus D times G minus E, minus A plus B times H, plus B minus D times G plus H, because if we simplify it, we get AE plus BG again. We can write AF plus BH as A times F minus H, plus A plus B times H. Same thing, if we simplify, we get AF plus BH back. CA plus DG can be written as C plus D times A plus D times G minus E. And we can write CF plus DH as A times F minus H plus A plus D times E plus H minus C plus D times E minus A minus C times E plus F. Now you may be confused, because we made the expressions even longer. But let's count the required products to calculate these expressions. We have a plus d times e plus h, let's name it p1. We have d times g minus e, let's name it p2. We have a plus b times h, let's name it p3. We have b minus d times g plus h, let's name it p4. We have a times f minus h, let's name it p5. We have c plus d times e, let's name it p6. And we have a minus c times e plus f, let's name it p7. You can notice that we needed 7 products only instead of 8, and even if we need to do extra additions and subtractions, those are way faster to do than a multiplication, so it's fine. And you can see that we can write C11 as P1 plus P2 minus P3 plus P4, C12 as P5 plus P3, C21 as P6 plus P2, and C22 as P5 plus P1 minus P6 minus P7. So in code, we calculate our 7 products, then we calculate C11, C12, C21, and C22, and we join them into a matrix that we return. And that is the Strassen's algorithm. For the time complexity, this time we call the function 7 times only instead of 8. We have t of n equal to 7 times t of n by 2 plus t of n squared. By using the master method, a is 7, b is 2, c is 2, and d is 0. Log b of a is log 2 of 7, which is around 2.81. Is greater than c, so t of n is theta of n power log b of a, which is theta of n power 2.81. Asymptotically better than theta of n cubed. But even if the Strassen's algorithm has a better time complexity than the brute force method, n has to be quite big to really get a considerable gain of time. It's not a huge, huge improvement, I mean. Also, here we decided to use brute force when n is equal to 2. But it's not necessarily the best choice. You have to search for the point n0 from where Strassen algorithm starts to be faster than brute force, because even if brute force is in theta of n cubed, it's faster for small values of n. And that point n0 can be for example equal to 512 or 1024 or something else. It depends on the implementation and the hardware. Last thing, Strassen algorithm works with square matrices whose size is a power of 2. So if we want to multiply matrices that don't respect these conditions, we have to find a way to make them adapt, for example by adding zeros or by cleverly splitting them. And obviously, if you need to multiply matrices in practice, just use a built-in method like NumPy and Python. We reached the end of this video, please share it to other people if you found it interesting, your support is very important to the channel. I hope that you understood how the Strassen algorithm works, and see you in the next one.